In this video, it's Ask Scott time again. We're gonna talk about how you can get better at controlling distances. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, Scott Hogan coming at you. We're back at it. We're here in the studio working on it. We are post derecho. We're almost back to normal. It's been a crazy week, but doesn't mean we can't stop getting better. Today, we're gonna to talk about a question that was sent in about how to get better with your golf game using your simulator. We're gonna use the Mevo Plus today, but you can use any simulator software to do what we're gonna to do today to get better. Remember, if you wanna have your question answered or you need some help on your game, how can you practice a certain part of your game using your simulator, make sure you leave us a comment down below. And as always, subscribe so you don't miss out when that video comes out, we will get to it. Now, today, the question we had was about distance control. How do you work on your distance control? So this is gonna be a two-part video because there's kind of two areas when I think distance control that we wanna look at. So the first one is gonna be wedges. I think you wanna look at your wedges and start looking at how you can control your distances on those shots because that's typically gonna be half shots and shots that are less than full because you just don't have a shorter club in your bag. Then in part two, we're gonna talk about how you can work on getting your yardages down with some of your longer irons, you know, your seven iron, your eight irons, things like that, to be able to dial in those yardages. So let's start talking about what we do with wedges. Wedges, when we have that, you know, for me it's a 60 degree where I'm gonna start having some sort of half swing. You know, I do do it with my sand wedge and my gap wedge as well, but a lot of times it's with that 60 degree. What we're looking for in these swings is we're trying to judge size of swing. So people are asking, all right, what should you do if you're gonna learn how to dial in your distances? The first thing I would do is I would get out a paper we use yardage cards in our academy, but you can use you know the app, the FS Golf app to track your shots. You can do it however you want. I have my students write it down because I think they'll remember it better. But what we do is we take that one club and we make sizes of swings. So we'll make a pitch size swing, we make a shoulder high swing, we make a full swing. We kind of break it down into three swings for each club. Now, what we write down is the carry number that goes with each one. We also will start looking at ball positions. Hey, if I make a pitch swing, ball in the front, ball in the back, what does that look like? Same thing on that shoulder high and on that full swing. What you're gonna start developing is kind of a little matrix chart. If you're familiar with the SkyTrack software, they have a wedge matrix automatically built in. That's a great little tool. Now, I just think all those numbers, when they get put on a computer, my, my experience was people would just gloss over them. I love having to write those down again, but that's a great tool. They have you do a pitch swing, a quarter swing, a three quarter swing, and a full swing or something like that. That's a great way to do it too. What you're doing is building a reference point for what swing is gonna hit the ball certain yardages. So I'd continue to work on that. And what we do is we hit five ball sets at each yardage and make sure we can get that within a specified distance. So if we usually say five yards to start, if we're hitting like a pitch shot, so I can't, let's say it goes 30 yards. I can't carry it more than 33 or 28 or you know so there's a five yard gap in between with 30 being pretty close to the middle number that you have we want that to be what's called our range we're trying to shrink that down and get a feel for how to hit shots at these sizes of swings so you're going to get what's called a range and you're going to have that dialed in we do that for all of those different swing feels that we do from there we then fire up the flight scope skills app flight scope skills app we're going to actually put on random yardages within their little range that they can hit this particular club. When that yardage pops up on the screen, they at first can reference their little chart and figure out what size swing they need to hit at that yardage in the air. But then from there, it's all about they gotta recall it. So we take that away and see how well they do. And we'll score those and see how their scores improve. That's how we'll work on wedges and dialing and yardages. First, gaining an awareness of what that yardage, what that swing produces for a yardage. Then we're going to start putting it and recalling it when we need it. 
and then you're gonna recall it without the help, just like you would have to do on a golf course, and that's what I like to have my players working on. So, using the Mevo Plus, it's a great way to do it. Again, you can use any launch monitor to do this. You can have any of the random practice modes that are out there, but get yourself aware of what yardage you hit with sizes of swings, then start figuring out how you can recall it and remember what you need so when you're on the golf course, you can use it to shoot lower scores. So that's wedge play yardage gapping. Again, that was a question that was sent in. How do you best go about gathering that information from your launch monitor? That's the way I found most successful. People ask, why don't you just go straight to the Flight Scope Skills app? Because a lot of times that puts emotion and I don't want people to see like, oh, you hit a shot and there's always that target circle out there. I don't wanna see a score result as they're starting off because then it negatively affects what they think of the shot and there's a whole bunch of stuff that goes in with that, especially if we're trying to perform in a tournament setting. So we start in that manner, work our way, see if we, if we can recall it and it usually works out pretty good. So again, we will talk about in the next video, we'll talk about more what I do with the longer clubs because it is kind of similar, but it's different in how you should work on changing the yardages. You wanna think a little bit differently. Here, we work on size of swing because a wedge, it's the shortest club in the bag. You can't just swing hard at it because you have no other options. You gotta to learn to slow your swing down and judge the pace and speed of the swing. So don't miss out on that next video on eight irons, seven irons, those mid irons, and we'll talk more about why we stop there when we're doing this. Again, if you like the video, give us a thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks everybody for watching. Peace. Whew.